In this D&D one-shot, I present to you Tunanu, the once good-aligned platinum dragon driven mad by the loss of her husband, now taking a human form and taking uh, one lucky, or depending on your point of view, unlucky bachelor from the kingdom that took him from her. She will put them through grueling trials to win her affection, and if no one's good enough, she will destroy the kingdom. The first bachelor is... Came, the edgiest of edge boys who is completely mute and can only speak in guitar sounds. Voiced by Asta, Seg, the bugbear, voiced by Drac, Lith, the wood elf, voiced by Lith Marielle, and Samael, the flightless Arakakra, voiced by myself. All right, so let's get started with the uh, one shot. So I've explained this to you before, but I want to uh, recap for the audience watching and any and anyone watching the video after I upload the VOD. So you are both bards summoned by the queen of the soul reapers. Uh, you see an ancient platinum dragon named Tunanu has devastated the soul reaper society and brought it to its knees. This destruction is revenge for reaping the soul of the uh, dragon's human husband-to-be whom she was going to grant immortality. The only way Tunanu will stop her rampage is if the Soul Society agrees to provide her with a suitable spouse. You bards have been chosen for your charisma and quick wit. You must pass the dragon Tunanu's trials to be worthy of her claw in marriage. So the first image is of the queen that you all serve, Queen of the Soul Reapers, Alessandra. Now, the dragon Tunanu has a true form, this horrid... A serpent with platinum scales capable of conjuring a flaming construct. But for the purposes of the uh, seduction of this dragon, as you attempt to get her hand in marriage, she has polymorphed into a human form. And she is currently, as you are all trying to get her attention and seduce her, she is holding the skulls of one of your citizens. So she is making it very clear that uh, she is a threat, and that you were doing this for her benefit and for her amusement. Uh, you, you and Asta are gathered together as the two most suitable bachelors in the kingdom. The two of you must attempt to win her over. However, a, uh, since there's only two of you, I am going to add an NPC just to fill up the roster just a tiny bit. You know what? Just for the fuck of it, let's make him a bird. This is Samael, the flightless Arakakra. If she is sufficiently amused and or seduced, she will not destroy your entire kingdom. Are you prepared, gentlemen? Always prepared. Excellent. Uh, you, as you are all waiting in a, there's a, almost like a conference room attached to a very large coliseum. And this conference room is elevated like 50 feet in the air and it's got this large sweeping balcony. And you can see over the balcony in the sky, this massive platinum dragon soaring sh through the sky, making an absolute display of themselves. So you see this uh, winged serpent uh, soaring through. They uh, polymorph into human, land in a three-point stance. They rattle the balcony. And they and uh, she's, she just looks at you and goes, hello, boys. So you're the ones who are supposed to win me over? We'll see how that goes. Would you like to introduce yourselves? Because, <laughs> yes, I will go first. By all means. I, I just pop out my loot and just go... <laughs> That's my introduction. So just jamming the fuck out on your loot? Exactly, I just fucking... Second? I just scream all my fucking ports. That's the way to do it. You're a bar. Just jam the fuck out and hope for the best. She turns to you, Drac, and looks at you expectantly, expecting you to introduce yourself. Just a second. Did you name your character Hi. Seg? Yes. You may, may... Hi, I'm Seg. I like to sing, dance, what? play, pretend, and kazoo. Oh, God. <laughs> the second you bust out the kazoo, you see her like yeah, mischievous no, okay. smile just fade away to irritation and disgust. 
I'm gonna die. So you're uh, just a burly, fat bugbear with a glorious beard up against the edgiest of edge boys. This is going to go so swimmingly. Yes. Nothing could go wrong. This is going to be amazing. Samael is left to introduce himself. He's going to take his quarterstaff, uh, spin it, crack it down uh, dramatically, and be like, I am Samael, the flightless Aarakocra, at your service. And he takes a very regal, smooth bow with all the uh, proper etiquette that you would expect of a nobleman. And then as you look at his fine plumage and his uh, fancy clothes, you think he might be nobility. Oh, shit. No. He is definitely cha-cha real smooth. Okay, boys. So the first thing I would like you both to do is to prove to me that you can make me happy in those tiresome mornings with a fresh cup of coffee. Surely you boys can manage coffee or tea, whichever you're more confident in. Do you think you can handle it? As uh, she gestures to dismiss you, you boys, and you are presented with the entire royal kitchen and a full staff of 30 of the uh, nation's finest chefs. So, Mr. Guitar Sound Effects for a name, are you going to be making coffee or tea? I just want to fucking die. That's what I want. All you have to do is make coffee or tea. Come on, Kane, you can do it. I believe in you. Okay, I'm going to do... Coffee. Black coffee. So you look over this sea of instant and gourmet coffees, and you can see that they still have the price tags on them. So you just see one that's the most expensive, and it's safe to assume that that's the best tasting one. Yeah, I mean, it's best. Uh, at least it is, like, the most expensive to be made. So. All right. Uh, so while you grab, grab the beans and head over to the coffee brewing equipment, Drac, are you doing coffee or tea? Okay. You can make her English breakfast black tea, ice green tea, oolong tea, or white tea with lemon. Those are what you know how to make. I've posted it in general chat. I will go for a oolong tea. Ooh. Interesting choice. It's a very interesting choice, actually. It is Samael's turn, and he is also going to uh, take some tea. And Drac, you feel like you made the, the correct decision, because he also goes for the oolong tea. The only difference being that he grabs it with far more confidence than you did. I'm the only one going for coffee? This is going to be so... Easy is a word you could use to describe the situation that others <laughs> may or may not use. It's all personal taste. Indeed, it is all personal taste. You have uh, a couple of options for coffee. Now, you can have the professional chefs make some above average good quality coffee or you can gamble and make it yourself and possibly make shit coffee or superb coffee depending on your individual skill do you go for the safe choice or do you gamble for the best oh god mm. this is okay you know what i have a gamble addict i'm going to go for the, the the fucking risky choice roll twice and take the best result Yep, ADV. For advantage. Oh, seven. seven. No. Oh, oh. I fucking plus three, and I got seven. Oh, my fucking God. Asta, you got oh. distracted and uh, stressed out, and you fumbled the coffee machine, and while you were pulling out the coffee after it was brewed, and you pulled the coffee pot out, you didn't unlatch it first, so you just pulled the whole machine off the counter and dropped it on the floor, demolishing the machine and smashing the coffee. God, I fucking hate this. <clears throat> there is no coffee or coffee machine to speak of. Oh god, I'm fucked. Then I already was... failed this one. You know what? You say that, but I'm probably gonna fail worse. Three people is the optimum number of people. And it also allows me to potentially kill someone and still have two people. Shit, 32. Wait. What? Wait, how does that happen? You put plus 30, you, you dingus. You're not cheating at all. 21. <laughs> Fuck. Go this is going to be like the there. best tea ever. With a 21 as your ultimate score, you are confident that you made a 
excellent a cup of tea with a score of 21. So, Asta Coffee, Fail, Drek, T, 21. And now we will roll for uh, Samuel. Samuel L. Jackson. So, there we go. Oh, fuck. Good guy <laughs> just doing everything right. He actually did something impressive introducing and wasn't a total weirdo. And then he makes good tea. And he did the same as me, but more confident. Yup. Yeah, we're fucking screwed. We're not banging the dragon. I hope you guys know that. All right. Okay. So, Drac, as you are lo- as you're watching this absolute master work his magic with this expensive high end team making equipment, you can see he even does that thing where he adds like a little bit of milk and makes like a feather design in the foam just to show off and be a dick. He'll he'll pour yeah. the cup of tea with the teapot behind his back just to be a dick. Just to be a dick about it. Just to be I a dick it. about it. Can He'll I, pour it without can looking. I fucking stab this guy at some point? In this <laughs> yeah. Please, if you like, want to, just end the competition and just resort to violence, you can. We're not doing that right now. We all gather, kill him, and then we go back to being rivals. So, Lith, you come running in. You are very late. You are like an hour late. Everyone else has made tea and coffee, and Tunano looks at you... She looks very annoyed at you that that you're late. I'm going to need you to make a introduce yourself and make a persuasion check to not have hi. some sort of penalty applied for being late. Hey, hi, hi. I'm sorry for being late. I was trying to prepare some things before coming here so that I could better entertain. With a 16, you as you explain why you were late and that you're really only late because you were trying to make sure you had everything prepared for the glorious Tunanu. You butter her up enough for her to not punish you for being late. She goes, fine, fine, I'll extend the time limit. Make me tea or coffee, and it better be good. So she's still slightly snippy for you being late, but she will snap her fingers and point to the kitchen and request tea or coffee. Which do you make? I am going to make a tea coffee. Is there anything at all in the kitchen? It's a it's the royal kitchen, so it's got almost every food and drink imaginable, but she specifically requested tea or coffee. So I'll make a mix of tea, coffee. You're going to make both tea and coffee and then mix it together? No, I will make them together. I'll make a mix of coffee with many herbs and spices. Coffee with Herbal, like, spices added into it. Okay, okay, yeah, I can see. Make a intelligence check. I'm going to make your check higher than I made everyone else's to see if you can figure out what the best combination of coffee beans and herbal spices would be. So roll intelligence. Not one. Whoa. You spend so much time overthinking how you're going to make this beverage, and you're already late that to Tunano just shouts in the kitchen and goes, you're taking too long, disqualified. And she just rages at the kitchen and you insta-fail. So Wait, are, are we out of the, of the competition and I? There's multiple trials. So it's going to be the uh, the score at the end of the game. Oh, I see. Okay. That's relieving. You're only That's out of the competition if you die, which could happen depending on how stupid you all are. <laughs> I'm in danger. <laughs> So, I'm in there. Drac, you present your uh, tea to Tunanu. She takes a sip and she goes, Oolong is my favorite type of tea. That was the correct choice. Ah, and it's exquisitely brewed. Ah, I love this. Divine. Absolutely divine. Well done. Well done. Do you want some tea music? You know what? That would be lovely. Play me a song. I enjoy the second cup of tea. Okay, I'll play you a, a song with my lovely kazoo. Oh, God. You can see her expression immediately drop and be like, I changed my mind. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's the only <laughs> instrument I own. She goes, points deducted for kazoo. <laughs> Your mean, score is reduced from a 21 to an 18. Oh, God. Then you see uh, Samael. He uh, swaggers in with this cup of oolong tea, exquisitely crafted. He hands it over, and he uh, does a flourish with his feathers and takes a bow. Anything for you, my queen. And just the deepest, most sultry voice that I cannot physically imitate, because I don't have a sexy voice. I can 
doubt that, but okay. <laughs> Thank you, Asta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's being, he's being modest here. <laughs> Thank you, guys. You're too nice. You're too nice. But regardless, as he hands over the uh, the tea with a sultry voice, uh, you see Tunano take just a sip and damn near have a heart attack in in shock and enjoyment. She took a sip uh, of your tea, Drac. She just downs the entire thing in one shot. Just, oh, that was... Oh, he mostly made her orgasm out of the... God damn it. <laughs> I think we already failed. It. He's a bird. And he's I... fucking wiping the floor with us. Oh, yeah, that sounds about right. You guys have the sexual attraction of a badger. <laughs> you are the most beautiful woman alive. Please be mine. And that's how you win a woman. Okay, did it win? No. Did he win? No. <laughs> No, no I that's won't. not how this works. Yeah, you can't <laughs> just say exactly you make excellent tea and hand it over. You <laughs> show stealing we, dick weasel. This is how you Listen, If I act within the expectations, then all there are going to be are failed expectations, and that's not what you want. All right, all right, all right. First of all, you don't even have a character sheet added to the campaign, so if you want to participate, you will do so as a commenter with no pluses or minuses to anything. That's just how good <laughs> I am. I don't need any pluses or minuses. I'm just God. All right, all right, all right, all right, whatever. Do you want to participate for real or no? Yes or no? I'll just stick around until things happen, so yeah, sure. I'm just going to ignore you, Powers. I'm going to ignore you. I'm just going to ignore this small lost child. Round one is over with a clear victory for Samael. I forgot to dole out punishments. Uh, Let's see, who all failed? Asta and... Lith both failed. As Tunanu looks at both Lith and Asta for completely fucking up what is supposed to be a very simple task, you invoke her wrath, and she glares at you. Fire shoot from her eyes, and she goes, You have failed the most basic of tasks. Feel my disappointment and rage. And you feel psychically attacked, and you physically feel her disappointment and anger and take okay, nine points of right. psychic damage. Lith, you have I'm nine a, HP, I'll... so you straight up pass out for a good 20 minutes before waking up with uh, one HP. Okay, I'm still alive. You're still alive, but this is going to impact you later. You'll find out why in a bit. Lith, as you wake up after passing out from the in- immense psychic energy that was dumped into your brain, you wake up on horseback. Everyone else, you are being uh, taken from the, the the kitchen downstairs to the arena next to the horse track, and you're all being uh, oh, nice. mounted on horses. Tunanu looks at the... She is in the center of the horse track on a swivel chair, and she's looking at all of you and going, You see, personally, I like to ride horses through the country, and sometimes I like it when those uh, horse riding sessions get a little exciting. So I just want you all to see how well you can handle a horse. We're doing the fucking JoJo fight. (laughs) Oh shit, it is. It's just uh, a friendly race. All you have to do is go around the track once and arrive at the finish line alive. You and the horse have to cross the finish line alive. Don't kill your horse. Let's see. Before we start the race, I'm just packing the horse and trying to get into good terms with him so that he will ride better. I believe we have animal handling. Can I make a check on that? You take a moment to get to know your horses and set them at ease so they don't try to buck you off. So let's make a animal handling check to see if you and your horse bond. All right, Gwyneth, with a uh, 15, you and the horse uh, very quickly uh, form a solid bond. The horse trusts you, and you're confident that it's going to listen to your commands. Drac, I'd like you to make an animal handling check as you get on your horse. All right. Drac, you Uh, bond with your horse? Both Asa and Samael managed to piss off their horses. You all approach the, uh, the starting line, and Tunana says, Go! Asta and Samael are at a disadvantage. Everyone go ahead and roll animal handling to get your horses going forward at top speed. Powers, both you and Samael get fully bucked off your horse. Asta, you take two points of bludgeoning damage as you fall on your back. Are you still conscious? Samael also takes two damage. He is still conscious. You guys are going to have your disadvantage on your next check. These things are not looking good. 
Drac and Lith are going to have to fuck up severely or die to not win this. All right. So as you two are gallivanting across the racetrack, which of you rolled higher? I got an uh, yeah. nat 20. Okay. So, Drac, you're in a strong lead with uh, Lith the distance behind. The other two losers are just on the ground. Drac, as you are running across the, the racetrack, barbed wire springs up from the, the ground right in front of your horse. There's just two iron poles that shoot up out of the ground. There's barbed wire between them. They're right in front of your horse. You go ahead and roll to jump over the barbed wire uh, string. Oh, that's not good, buddy. That's not good. Despite your strong bond with your horse and your excellent speed, you get dropped from a top horse speed to zero kilometers per hour as your horse gets tangled up in barbed wire and you get ejected from your horse. Oh, oh shit. Lith, normally you would have advantage because there's a trap coming, but that is balanced out by the disadvantage you would get by your horse freaking out that another horse just got injured. You see another barbed wire trap appear in front of your horse. Roll animal handling to jump it. With a 20, effortlessly, gracefully, you leap over the barbed wire, hit the ground, and you run uh, all the way past Drac and off into the next portion of the track. Drac, you can make a medicine check or a sleight of hand check to free your horse from the barbed wire and continue the race. I'm going to do sleight of hands. You pull out a dagger and cut the barbed wire off, and you manage to remove it without getting yourself injured. The horse has uh, minor injuries, but it is extremely scared. Tunanu mocks you and goes, Are you hurting my horse? Shame, <laughs> shame. Not a good look. Not a good look. Uh, Samael tries to jump on the horse, uh, and Samael just flies over the horse and lands on his face. He's not injured, <laughs> but he does look like an idiot. Nice. Asta, you do, you pull Perfect. off the exact same move, leaping into the air, except you land on your horse properly and take off running. You manage to catch up yes. with uh, w about where Drac is. Okay, finally. So, Gwyneth has taken the lead. Drac and Asta are tied for second and third. And then all the way in the back is Samael. Everybody, make perception checks. If you can, see if you can spot any more shenanigans. I fucking hate myself! Yeah. This is bullshit. This is fucking bullshit. I hate this. I hate this bot. I'm gonna I'm gonna fucking dismantle your bot, Bills. What did you get? I did get a 17. I got a 14. Okay. Both of you managed to spot immediately ahead of you. There's a random dark patch on the ground that looks like it's been uh, covered up by, like, leaves and debris to try and hide, that there's some uh, discoloration on the dirt ahead of you. It looks like bad news. Would you like to avoid it? Yes, of course. Asta, you're about to die. Huh? So... What do you mean I'm about to die? So you are the only one, I think, who didn't uh, see the trap, so your horse just runs directly into it as the leaves and twigs and uh, packed in mud break away, that there is a spike pit that your horse just runs directly into. Can I, could I cast animal talking and tell the horse something so that maybe the horse will have an advantage and lead him even though he's not doing anything? So you want to communicate with the horse before it uh, runs into the pit to let them know of the danger? Yeah, so even if Asta doesn't do anything, the horse will. Technically, he's already failed his role, but I'll allow it, because I think that's an interesting use of your powers. So, Lith, you pull a clutch move and inform Asta's horse of the upcoming trap right before he runs into it. Asta, you don't Thank see you anything, know. but your horse underneath you just takes a hard pivot to the left, and you very nearly fall off, barely catching yourself with one hand as the horse zigzags around. Okay, I'm alive. That's what matters. Thank you, Liv. You saved my life. Samuel, he finally gets on his horse, but at this point, you're two, th two thirds of the way done. He's just going to give up and walk his horse back to the stables. He gives up. <laughs> Fucking loser. Well, after yeah, all, I forgot I'll the lyrics. Yeah, 14. Okay. Lith, you you cross the finish line first with yourself and your horse in excellent condition. Asta, you had a rocky relationship with your horse, but you were otherwise undamaged. Drac, 
Your horse is wounded from the barbed wire, so it limps across the finish line in last place. Lith, as you uh, bring your uh, horse into uh, first place, Tunanu rushes out to uh, greet you and gives you a big old smooch on the cheek. She goes, very impressive. Very impressive. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you, thank you. But I... Just one moment. You you have to wait there. And they rush off to the other horse. Thank you for having spells. <laughs> thank you for hey, carrying the team. All right. Thank you for <laughs> knowing how to make a character. Next trial. Oh. You were all brought before what looked like a series of archery targets, but instead of arrows being embedded in them, you see a series of knives. Three knives, in fact. Oh, yeah. Now that's my gem. Tunanu says, Now, to unwind, sometimes I like to lower myself to petty human levels and try your various sports. And one sport that I have uh, fallen in love with is knife throwing. All you have to do is compete against each other and see who can throw a knife more accurately, so you can compete with me for fun. Ah, nice. I like this. I like the scenario. Sharp competition. You're given three daggers, and you make three sleight of hand checks, or a ranged weapon attack if you're proficient in throwing. Can Can I, like, roll it multiple times, like, at once? You want to throw all three knives at once? I do want to throw all three knives at, at once. Okay. Insane. Then, since you're rolling all, throwing all three knives at once, instead of making three separate rolls, roll once and triple the score. So if you roll low on one roll, you're gonna fuck yourself. But if you roll really high, <laughs> you're gonna be, you're gonna be king. And that's the the fun part. Okay, so let me roll once. Asta the gambling then, man. Making everything more risky. I hate this. That is actually a triple seven is 21. Lith got a seven, a four, and an 18. As you throw one of your your knives, you miss the target completely and hit one of the servants. Oh no. <laughs> nice. Uh, he was uh, carrying a tray man. of snacks, and you uh, you hit him in the hand and he dropped all of his snacks. Now you have no snacks. Man, oh, come on. we are upset about the, the snacks. Imagine the guy who just got stabbed. Priorities. Yeah. All right, Drac, what was your final score? So I got, my first one was a 20, and then I got two 18s. That's 56. Since you harmed one of the uh, servants, uh, you missed the target and stabbed one of the servants, uh, you are getting punished with some psychic damage. Oh, no. Once again, you are brought down to uh, zero, knocked out, and wake up 20 minutes later with one HP. You feel dizzy, you feel nauseous, you don't feel at the top of your game. Your next check, whatever it may be, is at disadvantage, because you've been knocked unconscious twice by magic. If you want to go to the kitchen and try to brew a potion, you can do so at disadvantage. Right, then let's do that. All right. Nice! They're both 23. I, I am a match in potion brewing. You do manage to get three potions of healing out of it. I will use one of them. You were at full health. We have two more trials to go, and so far no one is in the lead. <laughs> it might be a death match after all. There is one more trial before we resort to drastic measures to thin the herd. Wait. Trial four. This one is simple. All you have to do is deliver wine. Easy, right? Fuck. <laughs> Go to the kitchen and get me some wine. I bet I'm gonna fuck up my roll and I'm gonna end up drinking the wine and pissing off. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, it would make sense for Asta. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. She goes, chop, chop, get me some wine. It's a simple task, isn't it? So, as you go upstairs and get the wine and come back down, you are greeted to a small squad of kobolds with slings and daggers. And she goes, be sure not to drop the wine. If you uh, spill any or damage the bottle, you are out of the competition permanently. Bring me the wine, please. And you see these kobolds oh start getting ready to throw these slings at you, these yes. sling bullets. I ca- instead of going there at all, I will cast a message on one of the kobolds and then tell him something that will make him upset at the other ones. Like maybe that... The other kabod stole his candle or something. Oh, oh shit! Oh, thank you, you might have an upset. Asta, what are you doing? Hang on, I'm, I'm reading my spells. Okay, Drac, what are you doing? How many of the kobolds are there? Did you say? There, are, there are four of you and five kobolds. 
They're not particularly hard to beat in an open fight, but you have to protect a very fragile bottle of very expensive wine. They don't have to kill you to win. They just have to break the bottle. But I don't think I can disguise myself as a kobold. No, you can't change your race, but you can make yourself look different. For example, like, can I... you could dress hmm. in like servants' clothes. You could dress in like nobles' clothes. You could be tall, fat, short, skinny. Okay, okay, okay. So would that would that if I uh, get this role, would that make me like be able to cross this without any problems? Because my other option is thunder wave, which I just yeet everyone 10 feet away from me. It's a valid option, to be sure. You can make yourself look like a butler and then roll for deception. Technically, I could pull this off. Okay, Asta, I want you to go first and see if you can get past before any shenanigans even happen with the other characters. No, no, I fucked up. Oh, oh 17! Nice! So before I... Drac or Lith even do anything of meaning whatsoever, Asta just splashes himself with some magical energy. You see him put on a butler's outfit, and he's just got a serving tray and a bottle of wine, and he just casually walks past all of you, walks past the kobolds, and nobody stops him. Lith, you said that you wanted to start a fight within the kobolds with the message spell. With their greed, like saying one of them stole something from the other or something like that. So if you want to convince one kobold that another kobold stole something from him, make a deception check. Thirteen. Two of the five kobolds get into a fist fight as uh, one of them is convinced that the other has stolen from him. The two of them just start trading fists. There's still three kobolds remaining. Drac, you decided that you were going to make a run for it, right? Yep. So there are three kobolds left who are going to try and pelt you with sling bullets. I would like you to make three dexterity saving throws. Six, eighteen, and twenty-one. All right. So you manage to duck under two of the sling bullets, but one of them hits you. Now they are aiming specifically for the uh, for the wine. You can let them hit the wine, or you can make a, a sleight of hand check to attempt to protect the bottle with your body and take the damage instead of getting the bottle destroyed. What's up with Drac and his high fucking rolls? You take five points of damage, but you manage to keep the bottle itself safe. Samael also decides to make a run for it, and he just runs past and manages to dodge all of the sling bullets. Lith, you still have not attempted to cross. You have basically dispatched with two of them, but you've still got three remaining. You can continue to fight or cast spells, or you can make a run for it. What would you like to do? Uh, I'm going to make a run for it. Can I uh, roll powers. with acrobatics, like she's trying to just evade them or something? I'll allow it. But you have to make three checks regardless, because there's still three of them throwing uh, rocks at you. Nice! Okay. Nine. Okay. So, one of them is going to hit you. If you want to protect the bottle with your body, make a sleight of hand check to move the bottle out of the way. Thirteen, that succeeds. You take uh, six points of damage. Good thing you brewed that health potion, because otherwise you would have fallen over yeah, and crashed the bottle. Dead. Smart thinking. <laughs> you would have lost your bottle and lost the challenge. Now, since Asta didn't have to dodge anything, he didn't have to bob and weave or get distracted whatsoever, I'll give you advantage on your acrobatics check to try and sprint across the, uh, the field and get to Nanu first. Everyone else roll normally. Okay, I have oh, well, plus acrobatics. four in acrobatics, okay. Everyone roll acrobatics. I rolled, that with, I rolled that with advantage, right? Yep. So I got a 19! Yes. Oh, shit. <laughs> nice! Yep. You know what that, that means. means. Asta can really yeah. hold his alcohol. You're not gonna believe this, yeah. guys. <laughs> This is a four-way tie between the four of you. A four-way tie! Literally no one was disqualified. Literally none of what we did mattered. None of what we spent the whole two plus hours in mattered. We still will have to go bloodbath mode. What about the bird? He successfully dodged. He didn't even take any damage. I didn't expect it to come to this. I thought surely someone's gonna win two rounds. Come on, no nope. four-way tie. What are the odds? All right, Tunano says you have all done extremely well in this competition, better than I expected. Which means that uh, for my own amu amusement, 
I'll make you fight to the death. Whoever survives gets my hand in marriage. Yeah, I, I, I imagine this might. I imagine this might be the case. I am very much bad. Oh my god! If I mean, uh, anyone has, has health strength. potions, you can take them before the fight. Uh, you have a few moments before uh, combat starts. So if there's anything you want to do in preparation, do so now. You have a few I minutes. Did you not take any uh, healing spells? <laughs> no, I did not. I, I have Bane, Disguise Self, Identify, Thunder Wave, uh, Hellish Rebuke, Sea Invisibility, and Shatter. If you guys want to go invisible, I can see you. <laughs> go ahead and roll 2d4. Okay, so you're at full HP. A Lith is at full HP. I uh, came, I think you took damage, so you think you're at 9 HP, right? At least I have some points before dying. Now, okay. Sanctum Bugbear is probably the best off with uh, 19 HP. With 19 HP, a strength, actions, powerful, extra reach, just some nice stuff for battle. All right. So it's time we roll for initiative. Okay. You start 30 feet apart from each other. Asta, you go first. You get to make the first attack against your former companions. So... Let me use Bane, because that will give disadvantage to someone, right? Creatures of your choice, you can see within range, make a charisma saving throw. Now, whenever target fails, the saving throw makes an attack roll or a saving roll before the spell ends. That target must roll a d4 and subtract the number rolled from the attack or roll or saving roll. Choose up to three creatures, so you can apply this to everybody. Yeah, to all of them, right? Yep, everybody make a charisma saving throw. Starting with the debuffs, baby. Debuffs. Charisma. It's a uh, charisma save of eleven, so you need to get eleven or higher. So it's a saving throw, right? Yep. Drag succeeds. And what about our friend Samuel L. Jackson? He got a seven. Both him and Lith failed. For the next minute, both Samuel and Lith have to subtract a D four from every. Attack roll or saving throw. That's pretty harsh. That's... Okay, I'm sad because I wanted Drax to suffer no. that. <laughs> Drax the most dangerous one right now because he has the most HP. She is after being entertained and she wants us to fight because she does her IP of entertainment. So I will try to uh, appeal to our fellow friends that instead of killing each other, we should try to entertain her some other way, since unless she kills us, no one is gonna... She, she's not gonna force us to kill each other, so I'll try I mean, to sing a song and try to appeal for I mean, the humanity and... She's pretty to... straightforward with what she wants. She's never like really done any tricks before where she's been like, actually, yes. this isn't what I wanted. To be honest, yeah. I would go on board uh, with Lith. I just want to kill uh, Samuel first. We can go like a three-man show after that. So if you want to all agree to dogpile Samuel, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, that sounds good enough. Drac, it is your turn. Okay. Drac, what did you say you wanted to do? Take a wild guess. I imagine you want to throw some damage his way. What kind of attack are you going to use? So looking at what I have, I've got daggers which are 60 feet when thrown. Yeah, you can throw daggers from your current position. Okay, I'll try and throw a dagger. Let me check his armor class. That is a miss. So you oh. yeet a dagger at him, uh, but he manages to uh, duck under it and you hit nothing but dirt. Next, it is a Samael's turn, and you just yeeted the dagger at him. So he is absolutely going to go ahead and retaliate. All right, you are going to see the bird... He is going to crouch down really low, spread his wings, flap, and just dash at you as fast as he can. And he is going to attempt to peck you. Peck you. <laughs> is going to use his natural weapon against you. Did I do anything? Nope. Oh, shit. You have uh, a armor class what? of 12. He rolled a 14. That hits. Okay. Uh, uh, didn't he get debuffed by my bane? Oh, you're or right. You're right. right. Oh, okay. Yeah, everyone. I, I, uh, thought, I thought that only applied with damage, but I, I wasn't sure. It's attack rolls and saving throws, so you're right. He has to subtract one from his uh, attack roll. <laughs> I'm sorry, Drac. I it tried. Still hits. <laughs> it hits. I tried. To save okay, that, that, that's fine. All right. He lunges forward, beak first, and pierces you. 
through the body for seven points of piercing damage. Ow! Ouch, indeed. And that will end his turn. Yes, that's 12 damage. The HP you have now. All right, we're top top of the initiative order. Asta, what would you like to do? I can use Shatter, right? Shatter, sure. Yeah, I can use Shatter on fucking semi out. So I can just try and zap the motherfucker. This is a 10-foot yeah. radius sphere. So are you going to center it on him and also hurt one of your temporary allies, or are you going to cast it away from him so that it only hits him? Nine, he fails. Go ahead and roll 3d8 for me. Okay. Roll... Oh, fuck. We are not rolling to fuck. That comes later. I hope so. It's a fucking... Jesus Christ! Let me check how much... I guess I solved our problem, guys. I guess I solved our problem. (laughs) There is this... Thunderous boom that just erupts from behind Samael. This wave of energy hits him in the back and just reduces him to chunks. Just red chunks of meat and feather. Is that bird, right? Huh? Yeah, the bird, Uh, the bird. Yeah, if you want to cook him up later, you can. Yeah, we can cook him up. It's just... I drew a little on my horn as a victory thing. Because they have a horn. All right, Lith, it is your turn. You just watched Asta vaporize one of the other competitors. It is your turn. Oh my god, the power. I, oh, perfect. I love this. So I face down to, um, to Nani, and I start telling her, uh, To Nani, see, just this. Wasn't this something like what happened to your fiancé? Why would you do this to us instead? I, I know it probably hurts you to have seen that, but you can entertain you more in other ways. And uh, is it okay if I sing a little song? If you want to spend your turn making a performance check, you certainly can. Sure. Then, then literally, besides just a check. Sure. Yeah, so that was fun. Just a murder guy. いつも一羽で飛んでいる高き糸せつなかる音も飛んでいた風の中空を掴んだその翼 休めることができなくて心は何に例えよう高のようなこの心心は何に例えよう well done, well done, well done. So it's kind of a sad song about... So you are trying to appeal to Tunanu's better nature, assuming it exists in the first place, to try and uh, end the uh, bloodbath? Are you trying to end the death match? Yes, but I mean, she started all this because her, she lost her fiancé, right? Yes, and she's angry and she's lashing out and forcing you all to compete and get yourselves hurt So for a sense of catharsis. Let me just say that was a beautiful performance, Liv. Bravo. Fucking beautiful. <laughs> yeah. That, that was um, amazing. Thank you. Thank you for the performance. Yeah. So, since you are a bard... Putting on a live show against the what is effectively the big bad evil guy, even though they're technically good aligned. I'm going to give you an opportunity to persuade them. You can either roll performance or persuasion. Can I do a bard of inspiration on on her? Absolutely. Okay. So that's an extra 1d6. Uh, she rolled a 19. Go ahead and roll 1d6. 25. All right. <laughs> Tunano will think about it for a very long time. She goes... 
I Let's say you two. Value. And she looks at you, looking at Seg and Kame, going, What say you? Would you rather continue fighting to the death or perhaps a singing competition in- instead? I kill the yeah. guy that I want to kill, so I'm okay with singing. Yeah, sure, singing is good. <laughs> she goes, All right, your angelic voice has convinced me. If either of these two boys can sing better than you, I'll pick them. If, if you send up singing better than either of them, then I will pick you and we will end it without any further bloodshed. Oh, that's cute. Boys, I'd like you both to make mm. performance checks. Roll for performance. Is it d20? Yep, 1d20 plus your performance bonus. So, with uh, 25, a 19, and a 14... Far and away, Lith's performance is substantially better. Uh, she just absolutely overshadows you with her spectacular singing ability. Even though both of you put on a good show, you just can't compete. Lith, uh, one of the servants, hands you a ring and gives you the opportunity to propose. I'm not sure what to do. I don't want to marry her. I'm just sorry for her. Servants all have... gather around and say, The whole point was to uh, marry the dragon in exchange for sparing your kingdom. The fate of our kingdom is in your hands. Are you ready to propose? You already saved mm. us from the bl- blood death, Liz. Well, yeah. Uh, I will do the sacrifice, no. and then later, later on, later on in the plot, I, I will scheme how to get out of it. <laughs> can, can she pass the, the hand to someone else? <laughs> yes, yes. If you want to forfeit and give it to one of the boys, uh, that's up to you. I'm sorry, I confused the, your, your two voices. I am I'm somewhat bad with names. So yeah, I'll give it to Drac then. I will, I will tell her that Drac is a much better person and <laughs> pass the empty. I knew this dad board would come in handy one day. <laughs> is so taken aback and shocked that you would win the competition just to give it all up. And she gets annoyed at first and she goes, what, am I not good enough for you? I want you to make a persuasion Ooh. check to convince her that it's not an insult. You only get one. Asta, if you want to use your bardic on this one, you are welcome to. This is probably the best option. One person doesn't see, speaks in guitar. The other person has a kazoo. Oh, oh that is a nat one. That is a nat one. Security comes and shackles you and drags you away, Lith. Oh, no. Oh, she could kill all of us herself. (laughs) All right, Drac, Asta, or should I say Kame and Seg, you watch as Lith kicks your ass in the singing competition only to be dragged away in chains. So, Drac, second place, I guess. Second place goes to you. (laughs) Is she going to settle for second place? (laughs) All right, the, the <laughs> servants hand you the ring <laughs> and ask you to propose. I'm going to nearly just kill both of us right now. Like, <laughs> annoying me too much. So do much that eventually effort. down the line. My, I'm a bard that's main ta- thing is using a kazoo. She's going to kill me. She's definitely going to kill me. Eventually. At some point in the future, but not by the end of this session, hopefully. Oh, and definitely the whole kingdom. All of humanity is going down with it. Um, no. <laughs> I'm going I'm to do the same thing that Lyft did. I'm Are you going to forfeit? I'm going to forfeit as well for the joke at the end now. Crack, <laughs> you get arrested and dragged away to the dungeon along with Lyft. I didn't even get to do the persuasion check. You have disadvantage because she's already pissed that two people are rejecting her. So you have disadvantage on your persuasion check. Like, can um, can we even agree? Being that he talks in guitar. What? You think I'm gonna reject her? No fucking way. <laughs> I need you to roll a fifteen or higher to save your life. If you get a nat twenty, you also save Lith. Roll for persuasion. Okay. At disadvantage, because she's already pissed that two people have rejected so... her. <laughs> Go to the dungeon! <laughs> Am I going to die? Is she going to kill me out of spite? Out of being angry at this... We shall see! <laughs> the servants hand you the ring, Asta. What do you do? <laughs> I, I sing her a song. And uh, it, if you want to sing her a song to make her happy, roll performance. Shaking my knees just go... I want him to see if he can improve her mood, or if he just pisses her off more. Okay, let's go. Row one. If you now want this, you're killing the kingdom. I'm letting you know. 
Imagine reading and thinking, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> you get a nat one. She's just burning down the whole goddamn kingdom. Roll your fucking for- you know, performance check, you know, Asta. I thought she was doing that anyway. Uh, Yo, Sim Hill, just die for this. I hope you guys know we killed the bird boy for this. <laughs> I love how we just killed the bird boy and then just said, Is there any peace? Can you have peace in your heart? Like, did you? Oh, we just killed someone. <laughs> <laughs> he was the example. He was the emotional example. Just, you can't take me to pieces. <laughs> I turned into chicken nuggets and he goes, Please, fair peace. <laughs> Uh, you can't he fucking did it out of spite. Well, he didn't de- do anything specifically for us, we just didn't like the guy, so we yeah. It was literally just legal murder. It was just, yeah, we don't like this guy, we're gonna get him out of the way. <laughs> Holy oh, shit. God. Okay, Asta, as you propose and sing her a song, you improve her mood. She says yes, and the two of you are taken up to her chambers to consummate the marriage. We're at the dungeon, we got a room, we can look out, of, we got greats that, that we can look... And we're looking out of, and, oh and, God, we can see no. the, and we can see the window. No! And, we're, and, we're, and we just clap. <laughs> we're just clapping like, congrats, I'm glad you did it. I, I, I really enjoyed it. I need you to roll yeah, performance you. too. Please, your new wife. Why? <laughs> Why are you doing this to me? Please, your wife, Asta. It's our job. Hey. I actually I get a, a good uh, history in pleasing demonic beasts. Oh, did you? Oh, did you? It was quick, but no, it was mediocre, but it was lasting. Did you just call dragons demonic? I shut the fuck up. You did though. You can hear from the window turns to a full blown applause that you can slightly hear from the window. The the castle shakes with your thunderous. Uh... Thrusting. She's in dragon form as well. She's like in the serpent form. <laughs> and your scroll. Yeah. That's, how, that's, how, that's how like... Asta, because you have uh, pleased her and won her hand in marriage, she will grant you one wish. Oh my god, I... this again? You get one wish? You Don't fuck it up! I, I, I lean up to her. I take off my mask. And I say my first words ever in the whole campaign. I go to her and, and I say, I just want you to make me live as long as we can be forever together. You want to ask for a longer life? Yeah, I just, I just wish for immortality. Nice! Selfish as fuck, I love it. I love it. <laughs> wish granted! You get to live in the lap of luxury in the kingdom of a dragon queen with near infinite money and power you enjoyed the rest of your life with almost everything you could ever want as your former companions and former allies rot in a cell for the rest of their natural lives well done everybody (laughs) (laughs) and and as well that was drag shop if you hadn't asked me to try to pass the hand i was going to to ready. I, I felt so Asta actually has a chance of so if it was actually me ten years down the line she would be even more pissed because <laughs> her husband plays the kazoo constantly is an annoying piece of shit is a is hairy leaving hairs fucking everywhere the castle was full of hair and it's just like some weird nature man if I... she would come back ten years later even angrier, and you wouldn't be able to do anything. Asta was the safe bet. Asta or you, and you already... I, I think Lyft was the safe bet, because she she was the best out of us. She was the kindest yeah. out yeah. of us. Yeah. If she I'm won, sure. I bet my sweet ass she would ask for something good for the whole people. Oh. She, she, well, no. Yeah, no one would have gone yeah, to no, prison no, no, for no, one. No one <laughs> prison. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> I didn't know there was a wish afterwards either. And I was pl- my plan would be to just make her happy and then try to get away from her and try to not make her too possessive of me because she seems like a very possessive. All I'm, all yes. I'm saying is I'm glad CM started talking. If he was mute the whole his whole life with just guitar, I don't think that would have been good either. No. Nah. Yeah, she would, she would also be pissed. This is fucking hilarious, guys. 
I'm so glad you guys came out. This is, I'm going to remember this session for a while, dude. I thank you guys for coming out. That's all the material I have prepared. You guys are the best. Thank you for having us, Bill. Yo, had a lot of fun. It's always fun playing with you. Absolutely. Yeah. It was very fun. <laughs> Even the getting late was fun. I, I love the bit where I, I got a nearly really good score. I got 21, and I played the kazoo. <laughs> like, the kazoo always was a bad idea, yet I still just kept bringing it in. Never a dull moment. I'm gonna disconnect the call, guys. Bye! Yo.